Today, I'll be going over this Dobson 2000L, and if you're like me, you probably haven't heard of Dobson before, uh, but they've been around for about 10 years. This Dobson, the L series though, is fairly new to the lineup, and I wanted to go over what this is today. And right off the bat, you'll probably notice it looks a little bit like an EcoFlow. I've got an EcoFlow Delta Pro, and this looks like the mini-me or a little, little baby version of that. But I do like the slim design. A lot of these power stations are sort of square and blocky, and this one is the slim design. And that is partly to do with the semi-solid Life PO4. And what a semi-solid Life PO4 battery is, is just a, a different chemistry that allows them to be a little bit smaller, a little bit more lightweight. This is 41 pounds, and compared to the other models in this 2000 watt range, that's they're usually about 50 or so. So 10 pounds different, and that's quite a bit of difference when you're, when I've been playing with these and moving these around, uh, 10 pounds doesn't seem like a whole lot, but when you're, when you're actually picking it up, it actually is. But these semi-solid batteries are, are great because they allow for it uh, to be a little bit, weigh a little bit less, they're a little bit safer, a, a few different positives or benefits from these semi-solid batteries, but not enough that you'd want to go strictly with semi-solid Life PO4 batteries. They're not that much better than the regular Life PO4 batteries as much as like the regular life PO4 batteries are way better than lithium ion batteries and way safer than lithium ion batteries. So the semi-solid is cool, but not something that, you know, you need to go out of your way to make sure and get. And with this slim design, you've got the, all the controls and everything on front, which means the display is going to be a little bit smaller than these other power stations that have all the real estate right here that they could use, which isn't, isn't terrible. Uh, I would prefer it to be a little bit bigger, but with this design, it's just not possible. And with my old eyes, it, it gets kind of hard to see sometimes. And then on the front here, you've got all the outputs on here. You've got the DC outputs. You've got the 5521 over here, which if you have, I've got a security camera setup that plugs into this, or you can get an adapter for any 12 volt appliance or some or device that you have and get it to plug in here. You've also got the cigarette lighter, the typical cigarette lighter port adapter that plugs into your car. And that's about 120 watts or so. Then you've got the USB-Cs, which this one is 100 watts, and then you've got the 30 watts over here. So if you've got fast charging devices, you can plug those in and charge them over here. Otherwise, you get the 30 typical watts. And then the old school USB-As, which are the 18 watts. And then on the AC side, you've got the three right here, which are grounded outlets. They have the three prong outlets, and then three which aren't grounded. Honestly, this is the first time I've ever seen a power station that has three outlets that aren't grounded. I don't know that it's a big deal or not, because if you get a lamp or something like that that's not grounded, the three-prong outlet doesn't matter anyway. There's nothing plugged into it. So uh, I don't think that's a huge deal. I've just never seen it before. And then on the back here, you've got the charging ports. You've got the AC port and the car charging or the solar charging, and this is an XT60 port. W included with this, you get the car charging cord, which is the XT60 on one side and the cigarette lighter adapter on the other side. And then you also get the AC charger cord right here. And then you get the DAPS and the, the manual right here and also the extended warranty. It comes with a three year warranty already, but if you fill this out, you get an extra two years. So you get a five year warranty on this unit. And that's going to be plenty as long as they are uh, responsive. That's going to be plenty to find out uh, if this unit is, if something's wrong with it or not. Now, I brought up the car charging port because I wanted to mention when, you, when you're charging with solar and how the internal, the, the algorithm, the charge controller reacts to some of these different charging methods. I did, I hooked this up to my regular battery, my battery bank, my solar that comes into the house. And that is an XT90, which I just put an adapter on. And it is an XT90 to XT60 and plug that in. 
and I was getting full capacity, full uh, what what my solar panels were generating out of that. So at the when I did the video, it was you know 250, 300 watts. I can get all the way up to 400 watts in peak conditions, but it's usually around 250, 300 watts. And this handled it just fine. It it worked worked great. The issues I had is when I hooked it up to my Solar Saga 200, 200 watt panels. And these, it was only giving me a, a little bit over 100 watts. And with these same panels, the same type time of day, same conditions, I plugged them into a different power station and I was getting 187 or so, 180, 190 watts out of these. And then I plugged them back into here and I was still only getting that 100 watts. So something was happening and it was restricting how much energy was coming, uh, how much energy this was accepting. I plugged them into a, a cheap 100 watt foldable solar panel that I've had for a long time and it was getting about 75, 80 watts, and which is typical for that solar panel. It's not the greatest in the world. So that was working fine. I also plugged it into a 12 volt battery and I'll get back to my, my solar problems in a second. I plugged it into a 12 volt battery with a little adapter. You just plug it into the two terminals right there and the adapter is those terminals and the XT60 cord and you get a, a little bit over 100 watts out of that, which is, that's because it sees it as a battery, right? A car battery. I was thinking if I went up to 24 volts, which is what my battery bank setup is that my solar charging solar panels go into, I was thinking maybe I would get, uh, right now the power station that's hooked up to that gets 500 watts. So I was thinking maybe I'd get something around that because this one accepts 800 watts, but it didn't. It still thought it was a car battery at 24 volts. So I was getting 200, 230, somewhere in that range. So it wasn't enough to kick it up past that 9.5 amps. And I think going back to the solar panels, I think that's what the issue was, is was it the voltage or the VOC or what, it's all confusing to me, but it wasn't enough to kick that up past that 8.5 amps limit where it thought it was a car battery and not solar panels. I've, I've watched videos of other people with these solar panels. They've used Pecron solar panels and different types of solar panels. And Dobson even has 200 watt solar panels as well. And they all work. So I'm thinking it's a Jackery thing. The specs on the Jackery solar panels are, and, and how limited and defined this is with their, their algorithm or whatever. It just didn't work well with the Jackery solar panels. I've got other power stations that those panels work fine with. So, uh, you know, it is what it is. Could be a Jackery thing, uh, you know, sort of like Apple. Jackery loves to be proprietary in, in all that. You use Jackery this and Jackery that and makes it hard to use other things with Jackery units and vice versa. Maybe Dobson is the same way. They want you to use their solar panels, but, uh, it will work with some other ones, but it didn't work with the Jackeries. And I think it's because this doesn't recognize until you get the watts above 28 to 30 or the volts above 28 to 30. That's when it starts kicking in that, that solar part and it goes up to that 800 watts. And as far as the app on this, it's, it's typical, just like all the other apps. It's, it's nice to have, and it's probably important to install it when you first get one of these, because you can change the charging speed and you can do that at any time, but you can also update the firmware. If this needs to be updated, you can do those things. You can set the timeout screen timeout, the AC timeout and all those, those battery management things. But after that, you really don't need it. I mean, you can keep it on your phone if you want, and you may need it to update firmware in the future or change your charging speeds and things like that. But it's not something you need all the time unless you want to sit here and change the, you know, change the charging speed as you're doing stuff. But it's not something you'd need all the time. But it's a, you know, typical of, of all these, these power stations that have those apps. I also wanted to test the, the limits of this thing, a, a capacity test. And the first thing I did was I charged it from 100% or I discharged it from 100% to zero at about 850 watts. And in that range, I got about 95% efficiency, which is really good for, uh, you know, for any power station, really. Some of the higher end ones will get a little bit more than that, but a lot of the ones I've tested are in that 90, 89% uh, range, and this was up at 95. Now at 850 watts, that is the sweet spot for this. If you were to discharge it at, at, at its full capacity or full full wattage, 
it's gonna be much less efficient than that. Or if you were discharging it a lot slower, it's gonna be a lot less efficient than that. But that 850 is the sweet spot for this, and it was 95%, which was pretty good. I also wanted to test the capacity of this, what it would be like, what, when would it trip off, how, much amp uh, how many watts could I take out of this. So I did, I've got a hot plate, a heater, and a little griddle, and um, just put this to the test to see how it would do and how the fan noise was. And here's how that went right here. So let's run some capacity tests here. We'll see how this does. We'll, t we'll see how this the boost mode is. And I've got a couple of hot plates, my hot plate with two burners there set up. I've got my little space heater up here. I've got a blender and then I've got a grill right here and all of these should kick it up above 3000 watts. Also, while we're doing this, I wanna test the, the fan noise and see where we're at. Right now, you can see once I'm quiet what the it's pretty silent here in the room. All right, and we will check this periodically as we do this. So let's turn on the hot plate here. Oh, we got to turn on the AC. So it is running at 118, 119 volts to start up. You've got 1,435 watts that this is pulling. If we turn this one on right here, we jump up to 28, over 28, almost 29. And the voltage of this drops a little bit. It dropped down to 18, 118, and it's still going. This is rated for just over 2,000 watts and up to 3,300 with the boost mode. So. Uh, you can see it's what it's doing is dropping the voltage. You can see it drop right there to bring it back down to where it should be. And if you turn on this little space heater right here, it'll probably drop the voltage even more. So what this tells me is that it doesn't, it doesn't trip the, the overload sensor. It doesn't shut the unit down it just lowers the voltage, which is, I guess for some electronics, like what I've got plugged in here, it's fine. But I don't like the, the fact that you can't turn that off and it is always set that way. Some electronics are really sensitive to the voltage and they need 120 volts. So I don't, I don't necessarily like this P-boost mode, but it's in, you know, it's not just this power station, it's a lot of different power stations that have this boost mode. Now, as far as the fan noise, when you're above the 2000 watts, it'll be quiet here. And you can see about 62. 62 is where we're at as far as the, what this is. So it's, it's sort of loud. I mean, you can definitely hear it. It's not annoying or anything. It's like a, if you ever lived in an apartment back in a little while ago with the AC unit in there, sort of like that humming it, or on in the background. It's just a fan, but not, not really annoying, but you can definitely hear it once it gets up to that. Now, one other thing that was sort of it, it confusing to me was the, I plugged in my DC refrigerator, my Iceco refrigerator, and when I had this plugged in, after a few minutes, my ISCO threw an error up saying that it was too low a voltage, and this was only putting out about 11 volts. So I was wondering why that was, and then I remembered that my ISCO has a setting where you can set it to low, medium, and high, the voltage. That way, if it's in your car, you don't want your battery running down too low, so it, it will shut off before it kills your battery. I turned that down to low, and then this ran fine. This was, it, the voltage did drop under load to about 11.5, 11.7, somewhere in that range. But once I changed my, my refrigerator, my DC refrigerator, everything ran fine. I've never had to do that with any of my other power stations, so I don't know why this one drops under load, but it did, but that's easily fixable, and I'm sure uh, all of these DC refrigerators have that option on them. So all in all, this is a pretty cool little unit. Like I said, I do like the slim design here, the solid state LiPo4 batteries. I like the weight and all of that. The construction is pretty good. The screen is, is a little bit hard to see with old eyes like mine, but it's, it's not bad at all. 
If the solar charging thing, if you've got solar saga panels, you may be concerned about that. If that is a, an issue for you, you know, you maybe want to think twice about this. If you've only got 100 watts of solar to charge this, not, an, not going to be an issue at all. If you've got over three, 200, 300, that 30 volts of juice coming in, not going to be a problem at all with you. But for some solar panels, you know, it, it's a it's a hit or miss, I think, with which ones are going to work and which ones aren't. I do a little bit of research on that. And as far as the price point, these run about 700 bucks, which is right in there with uh, solar, with power stations, the, the budget models. Now this builds itself as a mid range, not a budget model, but not top of the line. And if you take that into consideration, it's a really good price point compared to some of the other, the budget models. Time will tell, and I will be doing a, a video review of this one and the other power stations in the future as well to let you know how they've stood up over time. But a really good price point. And it's it's tough to say from one point to another. Right now, this is 700 bucks. It, there may be sales going on, and this is every power station. There are sales going on all the time, is in coupon codes and all that. So it's almost one of those things where you never want to buy one full price, and you got to wait for the deal to come up. But for for the price range, this is not a bad little unit at all. At any rate, if you have any questions, any comments, you can leave them in the comment section below. You can also go to Dabson's website and they've got a, a phone number there. You can call and get support and ask them questions there. If you've got one of these units and you've got anything to add, make sure and leave those in the comments below, good or bad. What are your thoughts on the unit? But with that, I am done here today. Take care and prepare everyone. We will talk to you all later.